put them in there together. Okay, we'll put these two wires in the terminal block and tighten it up. Okay, now they're in there. Okay, now this this is the uh, temperature probe switch and power. There's a the unit. Now plug it back in. Find the plug. Apply power to it. Stand back in case it smokes. Everything's working good. Comes on. And now it's showing 14 degrees. And it's coming up because the temperature probe is inside this box. And inside of this box is a light bulb. Temperature probe's down there. We have a thermostat in there to check the temperature of the of the box when it's coming up, and it's pretty darn gone close. And there's a light bulb, which is our heat source. It came on as soon as we plugged it in because the temperature was 14 degrees in the in the box. Now it's come up to 16 already, and it'll come up to 38 and shut off. Now I noticed I had this one set up with a jumper on it to lo to block it, and I noticed that I, I didn't have my low parameter set. I had it set to 36 degrees, so when I push the set button, I could actually go, see it's set to 36 degrees. I could actually change my temperature down to 36 degrees instead of 37 degrees, so I can't change that. So I changed my low down, so the lowest, actually I'm going to change it to, to 38 degrees, so this thing cannot change. Um, so, see now that we have the high, the high is set for 38 degrees too. So that, once we get that jumper put in there, then we, that can't be changed. That'll, all the parameters are locked in. Um, the uh, thermostat, uh, is set to 38 degrees, and uh, all the uh, nothing will let it change. It has a one degree differential on there, so it'll go up to 38 degrees and it'll drop down one degree to 37, and it'll kick the uh, the uh, heater back on. Um, so that's uh, how she works. It's pretty simple and it works pretty good. Um, We'll try it out in the incubator when we we get our new. Uh, we've got chicks in the incubator now. Um, our chicken chicks they got killed. Uh, they died. Um, the temperatures, uh, the thermometers we had in there were uh, some digital thermometers, and they didn't work as well as we thought they were working. And uh, temperatures has a tendency to vary, and it wound up getting up to 110 degrees. I think even 120 degrees. Uh, the thermometers we had in there indicated a perfect temperature for two or three days, and then we went in and checked it, and, and uh, temperature was way high. Um, I don't like the digital thermometers uh, unless you have a way of calibrating them, but these seem to vary too much. Uh, we've I've got thermometers from a uh, bulb type thermometers or liquid type thermometers. They've probably got alcohol in them or something like that. They're not they're not mercury thermometers, but which I don't know whether you can even buy or not anymore. Uh, mercury are the are the best, but uh, we got new thermometers and we put all the thermometers in the in our incubators and we put I've got four or five of them in there. I got ten thermometers. Um, one was dropped right away and and so it was. Um, ruined and, and rejected uh, and the others are in the incubator and they all show exactly the same temperature and um, we put them in the different incubators with the digital thermometers and the digital thermometers are way off um, the uh, the bulb thermometers are showing a steady 100 degrees just a little less than 100 degrees uh, Fahrenheit and our digital thermometers will show 94 degrees, 93 degrees, uh, 99 degrees, 101 degrees. They just jump all over the place. They'll stay steady at 93.5 um, 
for a while and then they jump up to 99 and there they have a remote probe on them and the probes are sitting right next to the bulb thermometers and so I think that's what our problem was that we were having but um, and hopefully we got that fixed we got some good thermometers that's probably the thing you want to invest in problem uh, the, a lot of these incubators come with a little little thermometer it's pretty cheap um, it's not very reliable um, you drop them or bang them around a little get bit or they they get the the glass uh, tube will move around most of them are set in a plastic or some type of a, uh, a backing and the, the tube will move around in the backing and, and you can't trust them as to what they are um, unless you take them and calibrate them and put them in boiling water put them in a known temperature and and, ca and set them uh, you never know what they are um, the ones we got are lab style or uh, for a school they're not a real lab or medical grade thermometer but uh, they're, they're hard to find good bulb thermometers that are lab grade or medical grade and the problem with a lot of those, um, they're probably the best type of thermometer because the glass is etched with your temperature. Um, they're calibrated and the glass is actually etched and there's no way to change them, but they're real hard to read unless you hold on to them and hold them up to your eye. Um, and then, of course, most of the thermometers are prismatic in the way that the glass is blown so that if you turn them a certain way you just have a real thin column showing but if you turn them um, just the right way then it shows a real nice wide broad column that you can you can see and and get a good look at um, if those are if you can't pick them up and turn them it's kind of hard to do that sometimes so um, they're hard hard to use in an incubator setting or a remote setting but um, so you just have to be real careful with your thermometers Hopefully this one, this one has a thermometer here, uh, the digital um, indicator, and uh, let's say it's accurate to a tenth of a, a degree. So it's. Uh, almost up to 37 degrees now when it gets to 38 degrees you'll hear the the relay the solenoid I guess I don't know whether it's a solenoid in there it's a relay in there will will click indicating that the uh, switch opens opens the circuit just like turning off the wall switch and the light bulb will go off um, and then the uh, temperature will decrease down to uh, at, the, at 37 degrees and then the solenoid or the switch will click and uh, that will close the circuit and the light will come back on um, be the same thing if you were using a heater um, same thing if you were using an air conditioner or a refrigerator Okay, there was an audible click, and then at 38 degrees, and the light is shut off. Now, because I opened it up, it'll cool off a little faster, and it's already down to 37.4 degrees to. And there the solenoid clicked and it turned the light bulb back on again. Um, just the flywheel effect of the uh, of the cooling. Um, we'll drop it down a few degrees. I didn't have it open very long so it's not going to be as much as it would be if I opened it up. But um, anyway, it'll take a little bit and get the temperature coming back up. But you can see the light bulb is back on. The heater's back on. Now this unit is good for up to five watts, which should be plenty for a light bulb or two, and that's what we have for a heater or um, a small heater in an incubator. If you have a larger heater or a compressor, 
compressor motor, air conditioner, something like that, this wouldn't be, wouldn't handle that. It'd, it'd melt this down, it'd uh, fry this circuit board. But what you could do is run um, a solenoid, uh, a relay off from this. So this would supply the, uh, the uh, activating circuit voltage for a relay and then the relay would carry the heavy load say if you had a 220 motor or a 110 motor a heavy heavy uh, high amperage motor well anything above 5 amps you wouldn't want to run anything more than 5 amps off of this but uh, um, so any kind of a motor that you'd be running or a, or a heater that you would be running uh, you'd want to run this through a, uh, a solenoid and uh, a relay and just use this uh, for the controller for the relay. Okay, now I've hooked up uh, the jumper between the number five and number six pins on the terminal blocks of the pins. You can see the jumper here. Um, and that should lock everything in. And so if I turn this, you'd see that I had this turned off while I was doing this so that uh, the light was off in the box and the temperatures drop down. Um, so I set this now, turn, see it? And I can't even go into the into the set mode now. But I can get my temperature and I can't change it either. So my temperature now is set at 38 degrees. I can't go into the parameters at all to change any of those and I can I can check my set point but I can't change it at all so that's uh, that's all locked up now um, I I didn't that that's the point of, of uh, setting the uh, the high and the low um, set that was the one thing I noticed uh, when I checked this before we had the jumpers on there I couldn't go into the set uh, the parameters to change those at all but I could still change my temperature up and down to what my limits were on the high setting and the low setting. So that's why I went into this. Uh, I took the jumper out, went into it, and uh, changed the settings on the high and low to uh, 38 degrees. So now it's locked in at 38 degrees. It can't be changed. Um, we still have a one degree variance uh, on the, on the uh, uh, timing on it. So it'll go up to 38 degrees, uh, shut off, and then it'll drop down to 37 degrees turn back on and uh, take the temperature back up to 38 degrees, shut off and come back down to 37. So that is uh, is built into it. That's the lowest that you can get the change um, is one, de one degree um, that for that. Um, but everything else is locked in now. The thing's locked in, set up, so it can't, it's tamper proof. Uh, if power goes out, comes back on, the thing will set itself right back to either coming to 38 and click, the, the light bulb is now off in the box and its temperature is dropping down. So um, that's all set up and uh, I'm going to turn it off now and go do something else.